How are you now broadcasting from the studios of Sydney in Gadigal country? It's the Theory of Thing Investment Podcast, Season 8, Episode, I don't know, uh, I think it's 10 or 11, I don't care. Uh, remember, if it's talked about enough, it's a thing. This show is brought to you by the Australian Mutual Funds Exchange, giving you access, access to over 3,000 mutual funds anywhere in the world. Not anywhere, but most part of the world. Anywhere that's interesting in the world. Amfex.com, check it out now. If you want access to any of those mutual funds, it's pretty cool. And thank you very much to them. A reminder that all the advice contained is general in nature in this show. Please speak to an advisor about your needs. I am one of those people I know. Please don't uh, don't judge me. James Whelan, investment manager at VFS Group. I'm a white male, aged 42. I'm wearing jeans and a blue zip-up top thing that I think I got from Gazman because I'm a 70-year-old man. Uh, I'm joined by Heath Moss, HLM Investment. Heath, how are you now? What are you wearing? <laughs> Not much, just a, a <laughs> what, <black> polo, <laughs> polo and uh, some shorts, etc. But I don't, I don't want to hear you dis some Gazman. Oh, I love Gazman. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> we've got I, you. we've I, slid down the slate, haven't we? Yeah, we're, I'm on the other side of 40 now, so I'm allowed to wear Gazman. That's that's what I did. That's exactly <laughs> what I did. I went to yeah. the Gazman in my local plaza in Northbridge Plaza, I was, and, and I was fast. I was like, these are really good. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm and really, really price. cheap. Yeah, yeah. in this economy. Yeah, yeah. I'm I know. I'm a dummy. Get, get your points and vouchers. It's, it's just, it's, it's fantastic. It's yeah. You can look professional at a, at a decent price. Now I show Gaz, Gazman. If you want to sponsor the show, give us a call. <laughs> I, I, we almost lost him as a sponsor, but we got it back. I think that was pretty good. Uh, and hello to Gazman, if you're listening to. Thank you very much for your support of the show, which is coming soon. I showed the lady in the shop how you can size pants without needing to try them on. Do you know how to do oh, it? Oh, really? Yeah. No, I don't. So you, you button them up. Yeah. And then you put it over your over your back like a cape. Yeah. And the two, you, you wrap the belt bit around, so the top of the yeah. pants, if you have scissor, and they should just, just loosely come very close together. Okay. Okay, not too tight, not too loose. And that's yep. the, your neck in that ratio is the same as putting them on. Okay, excellent. Swear to All God. Right, I'll, I'll remember that. Yep. That's that's the way of just if you're a rush and just like I need pants right now and I don't have time to try them on, do it mm -hmm. that way, guaranteed. It'll be, it'll be close. It'll be close. Okay, uh, coming up in the show, uh, we've got a real quick one because I've got to go down to the jewelers to get a ring resized actually. So that's going to be my uh, good little time down there to get that done. It's always good to catch up with my jeweler as well and find out what's going on in the industry of metals and uh, and things like that. I got a ring made for my wife for her birthday a couple of months ago. Beautiful. And it was a bit big because oh. cause I'm an idiot. <laughs> you didn't you didn't but sneak into the bedroom at night and get get it up on a piece of paper and she wanted she inside? Wa no, she wanted it on a new different finger. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes so that's, sense. You see where so I've had to try and fit it and judge it. And she knew what she knew it was coming. Right. But yep. I just had to try and get this thing sorted out. Anyway. So it's always good talking to her because she was just like, you know, the the sapphires are you know, the same price as fine. She said, you know, the real cost increase in this ring, the gold. Mm -hmm. Yes. The gold, the gold, the gold is uh, is really the bit that's in this. See, I managed to turn this into a financial markets podcast. Yeah, so and, and if you'd bought it today, it would be a little bit cheaper because gold came off last night. Yeah, I know. But that's the way that it is, mate. Hey, guess what? Speaking of uh, not having much choice to do anything, I sold my Bitcoin at the beginning of the week. It really? It didn't? It hasn't just rallied? Once again. Because yes. I'm an idiot. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, had to, I, mean, I had to pay for something. I bought a new car. I had to change my yeah. car's over, so I bought a new car. Oh, my God. Tell me about the financing, Heath. Uh, you want to talk I, about 7.3% interest rates? Yeah, it's, it's it's ridiculous. Although I've still seen, um, I mean, I don't know who you dealt with, sorry, but um, I've seen the uh, a lot of the car companies like Toyota, et cetera, are still doing really low rates if you go through their uh, their financing uh, departments, like 3 4% along those lines. Yeah, um, serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, was, I saw something advertised the other day. We, we're getting to that stage again where, you know, cars are starting to become ample and in and, and full supply. Yeah. So you're starting to – you drive along like in Adelaide, it's Main North Road. You draw, drive down Main, Main North Road and there's car yards lined either side yeah. and the big sale signs are up there now. Um, and we didn't have that for a few years. It, it was, it was, you know, you go into a car yard. There's very little wiggle room that they had. But now, you know, all these new cars are coming online, um, and you know, second hand cars are being traded in. So there's ample supply again. So um, oh. we're starting to see, you know, the, the world correct itself as as it always was going to happen. That's that is the way that it goes. What is uh, as Rob Rennie just when he said this, like your, your brain just explodes with the, with the simplicity of 
that high that the cure for high prices is high prices. Yes. Um, and works works easier and more fluid in the commodities market sometimes. And but in this in this case, yep, in the car market it is. I, I am now the proud owner of an MG. Um, Beautiful. One of those one of those cheeky little SUVs, and it's a bit bigger to get down to the farm um, and that sort of thing. And the and the old the Mercedes just wasn't working for that sort of thing. Low profile. It's a young man's car. I'm the other side of forty now. Hey, I've got to get myself an SUV. You didn't get yourself a little red convertible. Well, I was, <laughs> I, ever since I was a kid, I've wanted to own an MG. Uh, mm. This MG is a little bit different from the one that I had in my head when I was a kid. Yeah, own. the old so, MGs would be MGB, MGB cars. green MGB is exactly what I wanted. And so, anyway, technically yes, but technically also no. So um, <laughs> now, uh, I just got a call from John Athanasio over mm-hmm. Redleaf Securities literally a few seconds ago. Uh, before we went to air, talking about they just raised three million dollars for JXT. Okay, um, this isn't a paid promotion. He called me and he said, "I need you to talk about this, James." They just raised a JXT. They're talking about the company, it's, they're, they're in music, they're in tech. It's a small cap. Um, they raised three million. Is, I think, yeah, go on. You, you, know, the, you know this better than I do. No, I, 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 it rings a bell. Is that the IMDb of music? Yeah. That's it. That's the one. I thought I recognised the code. Yep, that's it. JXT. They're called. Uh, this is why I don't do individual stocks at the small cap level. <laughs> I forgot it the 10 seconds after he said it. Jack anyway, J- thank you. Thank you. Um, they, yeah, they raised $3 million. The whole amount, this is what I do remember, the whole amount was done by the wise tech guy. Almost the whole amount was done by the wise tech ah, guy. John is very like, interesting. yeah, good for John and good for Redleaf too. Now, don't forget, Redleaf really supported the show when we first started off. Uh, we needed somewhere to sit and they gave us, John gave us access to his studio. So I'm forever grateful for him just starting it off when we were called the VIP show uh, back in those mm-hmm. days. That, uh, yeah, the whole amount was done by the Wise Tech fellow, whatever his name is. Um, gee, Wise Tech's turned around, hasn't it? Anyway, different story. That, uh, and he said, you know what? It's a small tech. It's a small tech cap. He's chucked in a plowed in a heap of money into it. This guy, no coverage, he, no coverage. Joining the 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 board. I don't know what he's, he does. He need uh, anyway, whatever. But the he's John's just like I can't. You can't get traction on this stuff. He said if it's not lithium or artificial yeah. intelligence. Nobody gives a rats. I'm just like, right. well, I don't know, chuck some AI in there somehow and, and figure it out. I'm not, I'm not here to solve your problems. Exactly. <laughs> um, but, yeah, he, he did say that. Uh, well done them on that on that raise. It's a stock that I'm just going to have a little look, look at. Um, my history with small caps, as everyone knows, is not amazing. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've got I've got a fair amount of before pay. We're we're, we're profitable on before pay, but uh, you know we're just waiting for it to. Uh, there is a path to profitability for that company, and it's a it's a good way. But um, that's not one that I'm going to hang my hat on. Um, that one, unfortunately, we seeded that company, so we're doing okay. That's a different story, though, um, mate. Last night, no, do a real quick one because I got to get away. Yep. Bank of England, fifty basis points last night. Whoa. Yeah. It's not. It's not been a good week for the the Poms, has it? They lost the first Ashes Test. Now the Bank of England slaps another fifty basis points on their you know home what? loans. They, did, they um, declared eight for. I know. Next, next thing you know, fifty basis points. Bang. Yep. Just like yep. that. Drop catches. Early de- declarations. <laughs> it is. It was just a terrible week for the Poms, but there's nothing better than beating them on their own turf, isn't it? That is true. That is true. It's okay. Well, look, inflation. Th- th- those numbers are just. Uh, just crazy what's coming yeah. out of out of the UK at the moment um, and raising rates. It seems like last night was sort of the the, the, the realisation that it's going to be higher for longer. However, I mean, even with Fed sitting on his second day in front of the Senate saying rates are still going to go up, look at what happened to the market last night. Look what happened to big tech. That is painfully resilient. And I don't I know. Think, if, do you think this is window dressing? I'm going to let you talk for a bit, mate. I'm, I, I've been, I think, I've been chatting my ass off here. I think England and the UK are an outlier. If you look at everywhere else in the world, even even Europe, inflation is coming down. It may mm. not come be coming down as quickly as we'd hope, but it, it's coming down. Whereas, yeah, in the UK, you know, that was a real it was a real shock how strong that that core inflation was. I think with the Fed is it's going to be they'll be on pause, but they'll be hawkish in tone. They'll try and remain hawkish, threaten to raise rates again um, to keep those yields higher. Um, and really, you know, use their obviously speech and tone to to manip- manipulate the market that way. I, I don't see them raising again. I mean, it, it would go against history. I think once they've paused, that's the end of the cycle. Um, I don't think they've ever restarted again. 
Um, so mm-hmm. you might want to correct me on that, but I think it would be the first time they've restarted again if they do raise rates. Okay. Um, so I think it's more of a, a hawkish tone and they remain on pause f- for now. Okay. Okay. What about here? Uh, oh, God. Now, my I mean, thesis, I, I've written a yeah. thesis about this. Stockhead have five days after I sent it to them, posted it. So yep. check out my article in Stockhead. Um, it's my thesis on that we're already in a recession. You go first, and yes. then I'll go second. Yeah. Well, I'm on the other side of that fence here in Australia. I think I don't you're think wrong. we're in a recession. Okay. We'll, we'll find out in a few months. Um, or a few, sorry, a few quarters, sorry. <laughs> it takes quarters, a while yeah, for that data yeah, yeah, yeah. to come through. Um, but I, I don't think we're in a recession. I don't think we're headed for a recession, a slowdown, you know, even 1% growth, you know, that sort of style of things. Uh, yes. But uh, the consumers, household budgets are still really solid. Um, we do still have a lot of that fixed interest to roll over into variable mm-hmm. which will impact and there mm-hmm. is a uh, sort of delay with these um, rate rises and their impact on households. But having said that, we've got about $270 billion of excess deposits still sitting in uh, accounts from COVID um, and that's not really been into, eaten into at the moment. And I know travel and all that are coming down. People adjust very well here in Australia. We adjust our budgets um, we're very good at paying down debt, um, and wages are still rising at a reasonable pace. So um, that 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 spending, I think, in the the uh, will come back in the fourth quarter. Um, I still think we will uh, will see some uh, rate cuts by the RBA, either you know November, December, or first quarter next year, on the the basis that the economy is just running too slow. And and like um, our previous guest said a few weeks ago, we're muddling through and really need that boost. Yeah, but I think the the legacy of power and low and etc. that will be the normalisation of rates, and we'll, no one will thank them for it. But you know, moving on in decades to come, the fact that we got rates back up to a four or five percent, um, meaning next time we have that 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 recession or that rule that black swan event, we can we can cut them to say two percent instead of zero. Yes, thank um, you. So you mean and, you mean having having a higher normal or neutral rate? I call it a normal rate. A yeah, normal yeah. rate. Yeah. No, no, I got slammed by that jackass. What was his name that, that, that did that when I talked about it? I know I, I, I always harp on about the Christmas show. I didn't explain myself properly back then. I wish I had. I wish I'd, yeah. I wish I'd stood up for myself against Colgo and Joe Masters and those people who tried to hit me uh, on this one, just talking about how rates always come down, James. I'm just like, well, okay. Yeah, they do. <laughs> this is at the end of 21. But- also, when Lowe, Lowe came into uh, his position, rates were at 1.5%, yeah. and they'd cut them to 0.75% before COVID hit. So they, they really had no wriggle room. The, the economy was already stalling and struggling, so that's why they'd cut them to 0.75%. Yeah. And then COVID hit, and they're like, well, we have to go to zero. There's no, nowhere else to go. And power was very similar when he came in. Oh um, rates were already very low. Colgo's just posted something on the chat. I, look, uh, <laughs> Colgo's just posted something on the chat. The, the, the Macquarie Bank reference rates. <laughs> the st- His ears were burning. <laughs> oh my god! I'm looking at the back bank. Um, what do you what do you what do you want to invest in, Heath? Give me a give me a give me a thing that you'd like to do. Me? You have, anyway, oh, put- standard variable. Do you want an investment home loan? There's never no, a better no. time to take out an SMSF <laughs> loan. No, I'm not t- touching any of that at the moment. How about just I'll, a standard line of credit? How about a line, yeah. line of credit? What about a low doc home loan? I'm I'm yeah. very happy with where I live at the moment. Thank you, mate. Fourteen spot nine nine percent, um, and the standard so, variable of eight point five seven percent. Oh wow! Yeah, no, I'll I'll wait. Although you can see what 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 really really <laughs> surprised me during the week was housing approvals in the US were very very strong, um, and that's with mortgage rates around seven percent. So the consumer there is showing, again, resilience. Um, and we saw that with retail figures a couple of weeks ago as well. But, you know, there's I think there's a few things over there clouding and abstract, uh, you know, making the figures and data look a little bit odd in terms of, you know, their job losses come mainly come through the white-collar sector, very wealthy and very highly paid sector. Um, so a lot of these people have a buffer and don't need to go into jobless claims and that yet. Um, so I think there's still a lot to come there. Again, we saw Goldman's push their um, their recession chance down to, what, 25% or something from Is that 40%. the States or here? That's in the States? Uh, yeah, over in the States, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Um, look, look, if, yeah. Can I the- theorise my thesis? Go um, for it. I'm going to theorise on my um, 
the thesis. So I'm going to theorize here. Uh, I'm going to keep saying that because I like this arrow. Um, so confidence is obviously, uh, and, and this is, I'm just going to go through the charts that I've posted. Confidence is obviously down. Adelaide Timbrell has been on here talking about how bad confidence has been for some time. It's right back down almost to that to that COVID level when everything locked down and everyone was just like, we're all going to die, screw it. Uh, but what was never corresponding was consumer spending. And so we had that, you know, we had that joke where it's just like restaurants full of people bitching about the economy. It's just like, guys, yeah. stop eating out, go home. Low is not going to, he's not mucking around. Like I said, last Tuesday was the day when we all realised that he's not screwing around. Exactly. A few Tuesdays ago now, actually, which is a long time ago. Um, that, And also, talking about low, more than ever, I think that we've got to be playing the man, not the ball on this one. That low's gone. He doesn't go around again. He gets yep. replaced by some ACTU hack. Mm -hmm. Good for them. I'm gonna I'm gonna treat them nice because you know that's just polite. But they'll they'll there'll be some plonky uh, that's coming from the labour side of things. It's so Phil Lyle is now going to be you know what I'm gone now anyway. So I've got to try and think about. I, I hate I hate to be I've I I do the person playing better than I do the actual economy playing thing. Everyone knows that about me. That he's going to say, well look, I've got to be the guy who's ratcheted this thing up and saved this thing. Otherwise, I'm not going to get a speaking gig for the rest of my life. I'm not going to be able to sit on the board of the future fund. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's, mm -hmm. you, you've, got to, you've got to be a hero now. You've got, to, you've got to set a legacy, and that's where he's going to be right now. And that's, that's yeah. what I'm playing for him, that he's going to go hard, as hard as he possibly can. He's not mucking around, so that at least he can say, hey, I, I ate the sword, but I got it done. And yeah. that's what and that's that's his legacy. Yeah, and that's what I was saying about normalization of rates. It's yeah, it, no one will thank them for it. But oh it, God, no! It, the next person's going to look done. like a hero. Oh, the the uh, the labor and the labor uh, hack left, will look like an will, absolute hero. Yep. Yeah, we because ease. rates will be stable. It will be. It will be. You know, even if we do have a slowdown, there will be little movement in the rates, and it will be should be an easier ride. But um, yep. Yeah, and if, the, even if there is, if there's a recession, you blame the last guy for the recession. You, you're the guy who's course. easing rates a little bit. Easy, mm. but a big, but a big boom. Anyway, so so consumer spending is coming down um, now. I like the way that you use that chart in your in your note as well, Heath. Yeah, uh, I saw that. Yeah, I saw and, that. Uh, everyone's been passing pass that around. Um, we're looking at delinquencies are going up through the roof as well. Uh, that big thick red line. The, the yield curve has inverted as well, Heath. That's important. I mean, in Australia, it really is hit and miss with that inversion of the yield curve, it predicting in recession. It's not like in the US. It's um, not. It's not. It's not a guarantee. However, there's. It's. It's. It's still inverted. Now, the other yep. one that, that that I got here was the labour force side, and this is sort of on the other side of what you said with regards to that. So, Gareth Aird, CBA head of Aussie Economics, he said that the message we take from the data is the labour market is loosening but not via the traditional mechanism of an increase in the unemployment rate. Rather, it is loosening via more workers looking for extra hours. Yep. That's, that makes sense. That's, that, that's, that's an economy under pressure. Yep. Um, anyway, okay, so, so, and, and it just goes on and on and on, and that's, and that's it. So I'll talk about steer clear of discretionary. I don't know about commodities at the moment, but copper still looks great. Oil actually yep. does look, look, look okay from here. Emerging markets, if you want to diversify India, uh, I can't bang the drum about that enough. That's... I did. I did talk about India in my notes. Uh, I saw that too. Yes. And NDIA, the uh, Global X uh, ETF. Um, I, in the ETF, I'm really yeah. liking India as a longer term growth story here, and having some exposure there, uh, it looks good. Yeah, yeah. It's a closed market. That's uh, I can bang on about that forever. We should just do an India program. Actually, that's where it should go. Okay, Matt. Now let's go footy tips and then get the hell out of here. Yep. Um, what have I got? What have I got? Uh, I th actually, my, my crows, I think uh, Collingwood at the line. So Collingwood at, uh, uh, what was the line? I just saw it before. It was like uh, 18 and a half. Mm. I think Collingwood are going to win by uh, four or five goals. So um, crows haven't been traveling well this year. And whilst we're in decent form, pies at the G, they've won 13 of their last home games. Um, yeah. I, I just can't see us getting... It will be close for, you know, two, three quarters, but then uh, the pies will pull away. Yeah. So they're, they're pretty good at the line. We got a couple of wins last week, didn't we? I, I've had, uh, I've no, had no, 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 no. Oh, you I, didn't? I, I, I was well off. I, <gasps> I thought Gold Coast would uh, beat uh, Carlton at the G, and they got smacked. 
uh, Carlton really came out and played their best game of the year, probably. Because um, everyone, everyone, <laughs> everyone's hanging on. On yeah, them. yeah, People and so um, yeah, okay. yeah, I got no in here. It was my first loss for a few weeks, so uh, looking Mate, to redeem I've myself. Had back to, I've had back to back outsiders. I'm lifting. I'm I'm carrying this outfit. Um, <laughs> my one. Look, I haven't had a whole lot of time to really get into it. It has been one of those weeks uh, for it. But you know, I sort of like. I, I think the Roosters are hit and miss, and I think the Raiders are also hit and miss. So let's just you know. <laughs> Modern portfolio theory to say that if you've got two random <laughs> events, just pick the one that's uh, that's going to pay you more. I think that's how it goes. I don't know. I didn't read the book. Yeah. Um, yeah I have four. Give yourself. Give the Raiders four and a half. You get a dollar seventy five for it. Um, just to try. Just that's, to try in it. Okay? Just to try. Yeah. Um, Not a converted try though, is it? You are so South Australian sometimes. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. Hey, how are the Rams going? How are those Adelaide Rams going? <laughs> yeah, the Rams, the Rams are fine, mate. They're, they're coming back next week. Um, that's the best I've got, unfortunately. I'm, I'm not 100% confident on it, so don't put a whole lot onto it. If you do, bear with your head, not over it, and all advice in the show is generally in nature. Heath, last bids, and then I've got to go and uh, negotiate with this lady. I'm going to get my wife's can... ring resized, which sounds... <laughs> Really funny when I say it. Like, Come on, sorry. I'll leave it alone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. Just go to the Aussies next Wednesday when we start the second test. Oh my god! And they've got they've got like a three day. It's a two day backup between the second and third test too. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. <laughs> Wouldn't you like you'd hate, you'd hate to be? You imagine if you had to bowl the last session. Yeah, you, yeah. You 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 bowl to close the game out, and then you lose the toss, and you have to go and bowl two days later. So I, I would. <laughs> yep, you'd be it. Um, okay, mate, that's been great. Thank you very much uh, for joining us here on the Theory of Thing, sponsored by the Australian Mutual Funds Exchange. If you actually want real direct involvement in Indian managed funds as opposed to a general ETF, although the Global X one is good, um, have a look at amfex.com and you can pick out the individual specialised Indian managed fund that you actually want to know about. That's why I'm so keen on India, and that's why I'm so keen on Amfex as well. AMFEX.com. Thanks very much, Heath. Have yourself a good no weekend and stay safe. You too. Everyone have a good one.